Hello, I am Pablo Valdivieso Kastner from the Constitutional Court of Ecuador. I am happy to introduce the automatized system of the Constitutional Court called SAC. The SAC's main objective is to address judicial accessibility, enhance transparency, and improve efficiency when delivering constitutional justice. This is a team effort that I would like to present to the following video. The quality of the judiciary in Ecuador is alarming. America's Barometer reported a 70% of the population having low or no confidence in the judiciary. The World Economic Forum Index places Ecuador 135th out of 137 countries regarding judicial independence. Transparency International ranks Ecuador 93rd among 180 countries in terms of transparency. In addition, the actual court inherited a considerable amount of backlog, about 14,000 unattended cases. This backlog was correlated with a lack of an automated handling system. Clerks and officers were processing each file by hand. There were only two available offices, one in Quito and one in Guayaquil, to file documents for the court. There was considerable opacity when processing cases. Users did not have official information, thus much of the time, the order of adjudication and the agility were highly arbitrary, not to mention corruption scandals and accountability problems. In Ecuador, the COVID-19 pandemic spread began in early March. The government declared a state of emergency and imposed strict curfew measures over nine months. People alleged a variety of potential human rights violations during the COVID-19 emergency. However, under such restrictions, Groups such as women, refugees, migrants, physicians, and indigenous people experience problems to file indictments and subpoenas before the court. Overall, this could have worsened transparency, efficiency, and access to justice services. During the pandemic, SAC has strengthened the capacities of the court to adopt new technologies, enhance transparency and accountability, and guarantee the universal access to judicial services. SAC includes a virtual platform to submit documents, a digital repository, search engines, and automatic and randomized allocation of the cases to each judge. Additionally, virtual hearings were set up to promote citizens' participation, and a communication plan was developed to inform citizens and help users with technical issues. Until this moment, the most effective aspects are the online submission of documents such as petitions. This has allowed citizens to access constitutional justice regardless of their location. Another important aspect is the online access to the repository of the digital constitutional folder of each case that is available 24-7 365 days a year and have had nearly 2.5 million visits. This was particularly useful during the COVID-19 curfew because users could hold account the court's activity. Moreover, SAC has allowed international organizations and third parties to file amici curie, which help judges to resolve cases considering other perspectives and points of view. Finally, the system brings closer citizens to constitutional justice by allowing them to attend public hearings through YouTube Live. The SAC project has a medium-term scope and national and international geographic and impact, so we're working to develop and implement the next phases in the near future. Through cutting-edge programming and software development, the SAC will feature software and language tools to facilitate access for people with impaired vision or hearing and people for whom Spanish is a second language, such as indigenous people. In this way, everyone will have complete access to the main services from the Constitutional Court. During the third phase, the SAC will use artificial intelligence to achieve two main objectives. First, to incorporate intelligent search engines to allow litigants, lawyers, scholars, and everyone interested to easily and intuitively find key rulings and opinions regarding specific rights and jurisprudential rules. Second, AI will contribute to enhancing the court's efficiency when admitting cases for adjudication or selecting cases to develop mandatory jurisprudence. In addition to those two main objectives, our effort might serve as a laboratory and example to other courts of the region. 
Finally, I would like to thank the organization of the World Justice Challenge for this initiative. We invite you to visit our project at the WJP website and the court's social media. Ecuador in the World Justice Challenge.